Hey everybody, it's Bust with week five of the Champion Draft Series, the midpoint of the season, week five of nine. This week we'll be up against the Canadian Chime Slimes, owned, managed, played for, battled with, attacking by Shadox. And so uh, this is, seems like, you know, a good point to do a bit of a recap since we're at the midway point of the season. We're currently one and three, uh, not a particularly spectacular record, but uh, I've been quite happy with how things have gone up to this point. And so we'll circle back to that. But in terms of our roster, we've made a few changes over the course of the past few weeks with the variety patch coming out, the nerfs to Cosmic Call, the nerfs to, co to concurrent timelines and the like. Uh, we had to really come in and drop a lot of the P and Z out of our lineup. And so uh, with some of the up Upside in the previous week, we did pick up Jarvan and LeBlanc. Uh, we brought this LeBlanc Trundle Warden of the Tribes deck last week. I was quite happy with how it performed. Uh, we're going to be looking to make more usage out of it, and that's what directed me towards Braum. Uh, there wasn't too much left uh, in terms of the Freylord champions out there, uh, but Braum was available. I do kind of like some of the things that he has access to, whether or not that is. Uh, making like Brom Lulu Warden of the Tribes like Infinity Patrons did uh, a couple of uh, Eternal Seasons back uh, or looking for some other way to buff him like within a Jax deck and a Jax Orn similar kind of thing to where we can at least put equipment onto Brom or boost him with an Omen Hawk or something to get him a little bit more uh, combat oriented. And so uh, to kind of circle back, recap to what we've had happen up to this point, as far as the draft goes, I, I was pretty happy with our strategy. It didn't all come together how we wanted. Uh, I was pretty upset that we didn't find Draven. Uh, the Jinx pick worked out pretty terribly without having access to Draven as well. I didn't realize how bad Noxus was. Uh, when you didn't have access to Draven. And so you come out and say, it's like, oh, well, I can just put in a different Noxus champion in this Draven space, have a slightly weaker deck. No, you can't. That's not a thing. Uh, <laughs> I found that out the hard way. Uh, and so we've been a bit lacking there. The other thing that was a, a, a bit of a letdown is I had this idea that we were going to draft triple concurrent timelines, which we did, but then we were also going to kind of draft Poppy as a flex champion. I felt like we could draft Poppy kind of early. Uh, she's a deck in herself. Uh, we've done it within this event where we just played, say, Poppy Caitlin. Caitlin was just a champion within uh, a pure... Uh, demacian based poppy deck, uh, but I really felt like we could just pick up Tarek right at the very end. Uh, and as it turned out, Tarek didn't get here. Our opponent today, Shadox, took Tarek away from us. I had no idea why. Uh, it, it turns out you can just play Tarek with Cosmic Call, and that's a thing, but uh, that was the other kind of letdown of the draft. And so as it goes, I feel like we did get hit really hard by RNG in this event. My big idea and thought from the draft and, and and opening this thing out was that we were going to be able to draft triple concurrent timelines. We were going to go out of our way to ensure that we could do that. And we did, right? I felt like that was a fairly strong strategy to where uh, we had Jax plus a PNZ champion. We had Jax Vi. That's an incredibly strong deck. And then after that, you just need like a Freylord champion and you can play uh, Freylord timelines. Ideally, it's Trundle, which we had. Trundle timelines, extremely strong. And then after that, you can just pick up another champion. Like any Bandle City champion will work. And then you can play Banana Blaster timelines. But the, the big downfall to this kind of thing is the deck is extremely weak to Cosmic Call. Cosmic Call being the most powerful deck, the strongest deck uh, at the onset set of the format, but uh, I felt like the the bad Targon Champion Cosmic Call decks just weren't going to be a thing. We mentioned Tarek Cosmic Call uh, and our previous opponent, Slay. Uh, he brought uh, Aurelian Soul Cosmic Call. He was playing Dragons. I loved it. He was playing uh, Aurelian Soul Shivana. The only Dragons in the deck, Aurelian Soul Shivana. The only Demacian cards, Shivana. Everything else in it, just a Cosmic Call deck. And so that kind of is what it is. You can. I, I felt like if we ran into that nonsense that we would just be able to ban out the one deck. But as it turns out, we played up against uh, Sir Termond in week three, or in week two. He played Triple Cosmic Call in week one. And then going into week three against Mage and Bay, he played Double Cosmic Call along with Rise, which Rise is another fairly bad matchup for uh, the concurrent timelines decks. And so, you know, from an RNG perspective uh, of the other nine players in the events, we played the only two 
that could realistically field a full Cosmic Call lineup, and we had to face them in the weeks before Cosmic Call got banned. And so that was a, a, a bit of a meh. Uh, I'm still happy with how things went. I feel like um, we won week one uh, against uh, Jason Sational. That was a, a tough matchup, but we pulled it down. Week two against Sir Tarmond, I felt like we could have won that against his uh, Maokai Mill deck if I had uh, pieced together just shuffling jinxes back into our deck with uh, the the champion spell i think we may have won that one or had a chance with you know we have a chance having a chance to win is better than just outright losing right and so uh, i kind of missed that one there were some big top decks in the mage and bay matchup that, that took that one away from us and then uh last week we had some extremely extremely close matches uh, against slay and so uh, you know all things considered uh with uh draven not turning up with the poppy deck not coming together, with concurrent timelines being miserable, still being in this spot to where every match has gone to 2-1, and a lot of the matchups were extremely close. Uh, I was quite happy with how that turned out. But moving forward with this, I feel like the way that our lineup is probably going to go the rest of the way uh, is we're going to look to bring a Poppy deck and two Freylord decks. Uh, we'll have to just kind of see how that lines up. I think that that's going to work out okay. Uh, we can still kind of pivot around, right? We do have access to... Uh, Tristana. We can play Tristana Poppy for a uh, champion strength-based Tristana deck. We can play uh, Tristana Lulu for a ghost-based Tristana deck in the same vein. Uh, we have access to this Trundle with LeBlanc, which I've been quite happy with. We have Jax and Freylord champions, which is quite good. We have Jarvan, uh, who can pair off nicely with some of these other champions. You can say, like, play Jarvan, Freylord, Warden of the Tribes. Like, we have a lot of options with our remaining lineup here. I don't think that we're going to end up bringing Jinx, but uh, I'm happy with how we've kind of transitioned uh, from being in this space of a concurrent timelines lineup that just couldn't play it uh, to having something new and fresh that we're able to bring out here. And so uh, with that in mind, we can bring up uh, Shadox's team and take a peek at it. And so the Canadian chimes lines, I feel like at this point he's three and one. Uh, he has what I think to probably be uh, the strongest lineup still in the event. Uh, and we're definitely going to be fighting an uphill battle today. And so uh, Shadox has made some changes here recently. He was the the dirty opponent that thought it would be cool to take the Tarek away from us. Uh, with the changes to uh, to Cosmic Call, he has dropped the Tarek and come in and picked up the Lissandra. Uh, right as the variety patch was released, there was a big uh, kind of fire sale of champions. A lot of changes happening across the lineups with the release of uh, all of the big giant dragon any kind of units and Bordier as the eight mana Freylord dragon. Uh, it was kind of apparent that Freylord was going to be a very powerful place to be. Uh, I don't know if he regrets dropping uh, Tarek for Lissandra in the sense that Tarek was still pretty good. I don't know how happy he is to hang on to Renekton. I don't know how his point situation was, but uh, that Tarek is still out there. Lissandra has been picked up. And so in terms of the things that he's been doing here recently, he's been playing a lot of Annie Jin. Uh, in terms of this being a control deck, he plays a lot of stuns. Uh, so if you think more in terms of a uh, Jen Bandle City deck that has uh, Riptide Rex and Lord Broadmain and a bunch of ping spells, uh, it, it's set up more like that, but it, it has to be tied in uh, with Annie and Noxus. And so it still has a bunch of stuns. It has Ravenous Flock to combo with them, but it doesn't have as much kind of direct burn as that deck would really want. Uh, the only damage kind of spells being things like Blade's Edge, but that's the kind of thing that he has here. I expect this deck to be showing up. I don't think it's going to be a strong matchup for anything that we're going to be doing. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but I expect that to be here. Otherwise, he's been kind of a real mixed bag in terms of what he's bringing. He's brought Lux every week, but he's brought like Lux Alawi. No, he has not brought Alawi Lux. He's brought Lux Taric twice as kind of like a... Um, Poppy Tarek style deck, and then he brought Lux with someone else another time. And so uh, those are the only kind of real consistencies. I'm surprised he hasn't found a way to really take advantage of this Victor, as Victor is arguably the strongest champion in the space of uh, Eternal, uh, but that hasn't really made its way out. Otherwise, I think Alawi has been a piece of the lineup every week. He's played 
uh, Alawi Shin, and he's played Alawi Renekton, I believe. That's turned up a few times, uh, and so I kind of expect that to turn up as well. But at the end of the day, what I, I, I feel really confident in what we're going to see in terms of two decks. I think that this uh, Annie Jen Raven Bloom Conservatory Stun Ravenous Flock deck is going to turn up. I think he's also going to play uh, Lissandra Elise removal pile. Uh, I think that's going to be a deck that we just can't beat, and it's definitely going to turn up. Uh, and then the last deck that he's going to bring is kind of what's up in the air. I, I think that the kind of most powerful thing that he has remaining is going to be a Lux deck, whether or not that be uh, a Lowey Lux or that be uh, 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 Lux Shin kind of like uh, Shen Vane, or not Shen, kind of, he, he has this like triple combo that he can do with Lux, right? He can do a Lowey Lux, which is a real deck. He can do Lux Victor, which is kind of in the same vein as, Va as uh, Jace Lux. And then he can also play Lux Shen, which would be kind of in the same vein as Shen Jarvan. Uh, I, regardless of how this triangle pans out, I, I think Lux is going to be the cornerstone of what else we see. And then whatever flavor comes along is kind of up to him. I don't think he's going to go off the rails and play like Shen Alawi into our lineup. I, I think he's just going to play what looks to be the most kind of consistently strong stuff against mid-range, which Lux is extremely good at. Uh, but the, the pairing is what's going to be in. Like, ideally, I think we would want to see a Lowey Lux or Victor Lux. I think Lux Shen uh, would be a fairly nightmarish kind of matchup. But uh, the way I kind of want to proceed and look with our lineup as we go forward uh, is uh, we're just going to ban this this Shadow Isles monstrosity that we're never going to beat. I think that we can reasonably tackle uh, the Annie stun deck if we think about it and approach it the right way. And then at the end of the day, there's going to be a Lux deck, which uh, is just going to be fine. And I think that that's the deck uh, that we're actually going to be capable of beating today. And so with that stuff in mind, we'll bring up the decks in just a moment. The, the things that I kind of wanted to call out is, again, we're just going to ban the Shadow Isles pile, right? And so after that, it feels like we're going to be up against the Annie Stun deck and some kind of a Lowey deck. And the way that I think that we can really approach that is if we're able to survive a four damage hit, that does a, a big number in terms of us being able to maintain tempo, right? And so if the opponent comes in, stuns a unit, plays Ravenous Flock and kills it, that's a, a huge bonus for him, right? He plays a stun bird, he has his unit on board, he gets a stun on our biggest unit, Ravenous Flock's that biggest unit, it dies, we, we lose out in tempo like that. But if he plays the stun bird, the stun bird hits a five health unit, and then he can't Ravenous Flock it, we're able to recover from that pretty reasonably and battle on. Same kind of thing in terms of a Lux deck. If, you know, Lux is on board, she's flipped, she's generating final sparks, she wants to cast final spark on our best unit, our best unit is Trundle. It's not going to kill Trundle, right? That's not a particularly strong target, and so not getting to kill our good units is great. If we can kind of shift those final sparks down to units that we don't care about, so he's final sparking an Omen Hawk, he's final sparking a, uh, I don't know, a Lulu or something, right? The units that we don't care about are what we want to kind of shift that focus toward, and we can really kind of hopefully pick off the removal in that sense. And so that is, is kind of thing number one in mind. Like, I'm not amped uh, about taking, like, a big unit mid rangey style deck into something that just has a, a massive pile of stuns in it, but I think that that's conceptually going to be a place to where we're strong. And then the other thing is this, is the removal he has is not very good, and it's not fast speed. And so if we ignore the idea of that Shadow Isles Freylord deck, right, he's looking at the, the big pile of stuns that are good at, at stopping mid-range curve decks, but they're not good at killing units. The same thing kind of applies with whatever Lux deck he wants to play. Final Sparks are not good at, at like, stopping must-kill units right now. And so if we are on board with a LeBlanc, or if we're on board with a Tristana, or if we're on board with a Poppy, those champions should be pretty safe against those decks. And so it's not to say that we don't uh, attack with Poppy and have her get stunned, but you've already got the bonus at that point, right? Or it's not to say that we attack with LeBlanc and she gets stunned, but she's not going to get killed, right? She didn't just get hit with Mystic Shot, and then she still gets to get the bonus from all of the other units that are dealing damage on board. And so those kind of ideas are what I really wanted to take in with this lineup. We just want to be doing really, really high-powered shit because our opponent's not going to be able to really stop and interact with what we're doing. And then amongst that high-powered shit, we would ideally have some fairly large units along the way.
And so with those ideas in mind, deck number one, we're going to be playing LeBlanc Trundle. And this fits the bill in a lot of ways, right? And so in terms of surviving the four damage things, Trundle just does it naturally. And then if we're able to get an Omen Hawk on board, or if we're able to get a Glacial Saurion on board, deliver that single plus one plus one to our units, then the majority of our team survives, or at least the very uh, combat-centric pieces of the team with the Reckless Trafari and the Glacial Saurion, uh, the Enraged Fire Spitter all surviving. And then in addition to Trundle just surviving naturally, the Ancient Yeti and Incisive Tactician do as well. And so we have this fairly meaty collection of units, right, that have a pretty good shot at surviving um, things like Ravenous Flock. And then if it comes down to it, we do have a handful of combat tricks like the Three Sisters or Troll Chant to, to give us a little bit of boost of health and fight through in that tempo. Uh, in that same kind of vein as having just these big high-powered cards that if our opponent's not going to interact with, then we can do some really powerful stuff. We have LeBlanc as the kind of key feature to that, but we also have some interesting units out here like Trafarian Glory Seekers and Reckless Trafarians that the opponent's not really going to want to mess with, right? These are some fairly uh, meaty and heavy units, like things like Trafarian Glory Seeker. If it's running into some kind of deck that has a bunch of pokey sticks and group shots and the like, then it's really going to suffer. But if it's out here in this space to where the opponent's not really playing removal spells, they're either just playing big units like Lux or they're playing... Um, uh, like uh, the, the big pile of stuns, then we have the opportunities for units like that to pop off. Even moving b into the bigger space with things like Enraged Fire Spitter, being able to, to get the kill spell and then get a bunch of hooks in on units, there's not really any way for the opponent to be like, oops, I'm just going to stop and kill that, right? They don't have the removal to pull that off. And so uh, I think that a lot of the kind of strategy coming out of LeBlanc Trundle should work against uh, both uh, a Lux deck and against the Stuns deck. Uh, you know, we do have to worry a little bit in the sense that if he does decide to play Lux with Victor or if he does pick up a Victor pile in a different way, uh, the P and Z uh, removal comes online and then it's a problem. But, you know, time has kind of shown he's not really doing that. And so I'm hoping our units are okay in this space, right? You don't want to be taking your your LeBlanc, uh, Trafarian, Glory Seeker deck up against P and Z removal. It's just way too efficient for what you're doing. But over the course of history, he's played uh, Victor Elise once. And that was some kind of like watery grave anti-control pile. And, and I don't think that we're going to run into that whatsoever. And so uh, I feel like this is a fairly safe pick. I, I feel like the lineup that we're facing, the high-powered stuff that they're going to do, doesn't line up with the high-powered stuff that we're going to do. And so I think that these high attack, low health units should be pretty safe uh, in this matchup that we're facing. And so deck number two, Jax Braum. This is what I expect to be the ban on the day. I don't think that this Jax deck is going to make its way through. And so extremely similar to Jax Orn, uh, the, the shell of this deck and what I really have going on here is kind of like 90% of the de the uh, the Jax Orn deck that Akaido just used to win the Eternal Open. And then a little bit of this flavor using things like Ferocity's Wild, or Wild Claw's Ferocity, because I think that's going to be exceptionally strong here. And so the, the kind of core idea that we have have here is this is still you know lined up as a big overwhelm heavy um weapon masters jacks orange style deck like a kaido won the open with it has the uh the unit boosting with the omen hawk and the apprentice you have the maximum ways to get a three health jacks down on the second turn of the game uh you have the additional unit boosting with the Averosian outriders and the hearth blood mender it's just an all-around high-powered stat fiesta full of overwhelms coming directly at the opponent I, I feel like they're not going to be uh super well aligned to dealing with this kind of thing you can't final spark through the high health we get with bone clubs and uh, putting uh, forges onto weapons and stuff. And so I don't think his decks are going to line up well into this. The things where we start to shift away from what Akaido played is we don't have access to Orn, right? Tried to trade for him. It didn't happen. Uh, we have Braum. And so uh, I do like the way that this deck can get some advantages with Braum. You know, you can just put any equipment on Braum. 
he can now attack favorably. He can hit plus one, plus one off of an Omen Hawk, off of an Avrosian Outriders, get right into strong combats. You can just Hearth Blood Mender onto Braum with no Forge, and then you have that plus two, plus two applied to him. He can start making those attacks. There's a lot of nice combos within this deck that work well onto Braum. And while uh, I don't think the matchup today is really the place to showcase it, the, the matchup today is more so like, well, we're playing two Freylord decks, and this is how we play Jack's Freylord. But if you are up against like a real like aggro pile or mid-range pile, having access to all of this nonsense onto Braum uh, can be exceptionally strong. Uh, the last thing to kind of call out with this is we are playing the Triple Wild Claws Ferocity. Uh, I feel like one of the strongest ways to attack our opponent's removal, uh, be it his very slow speed stuns or the slow speed removal coming out of Lux, uh, is going to be with Wild Claws Ferocity. And so we can hopefully set up these boards to where we have one or two meaty units on there, and then at the start of our turn, we focus out the Wild Claws Ferocity onto an Omen Hawk or something, and then we just have the giant Overwhelm board coming in. And so we can really hopefully play around our opponent's removal suite with the likes of Wild Claws Ferocity. And so again, I expect this to get banned if we do get to play this. Uh, I feel like this is the, the way to really attack uh, Shadox's lineup. It's just we, we can't bring three copies of this deck, and uh, it's a bit of a bummer in that sense. But I, I think LeBlanc is going to be okay. I think this is going to get banned, and now we can bring up deck number three. And so our last deck, Poppy Jarvan, I feel like the aggressive engine deck is a way that we can really uh, take advantage of the opposing lineup. If we're playing up against something like Alawi Lux, they, they should kind of just cap out at three units, right? You have a random 2-3 on the board, you have a Tentacle, you have an Alawi, but you can't really develop the board beyond that. Uh, if we're able to get into this space to where we get a full six units and a Poppy attack, we can crash in for, you know, 10-12 damage and really get shutdowns that way. Uh, and then as we are looking at stuff like Alawi Lux to where the, the removal is slow and not very plentiful, and we look towards the big stuns deck, they don't have a ton of ways from stopping us from developing our engine, right? And so we can get the Battlesmith boosting units, the Vanguard Sergeant boosting units, the Vanguard Bannerman boosting units, Poppy boosting units, the, the Champion Strength boosting units. They, If we're just going to sit down and like stare at each other for a little bit, you know, give me time to build up to the full six unit board. It's not one of those games to where, uh, you know, I put a Scythria on the board and she has to just do nothing and not trade you know she's like it's like the Scythria can come down Battlesmith can come down Vanguard Defender comes down if you're in you know an aggro matchup you might have to be making trades on that but without the opponent playing real removal spells we should be able to play those units down and then follow up with a Bannerman and follow up with a Poppy and so we shouldn't have to really come out and lose our units and we should be able to maximize uh, the kind of poppy value, right? I always, always, always talk about you would prefer to be getting six units bonus from poppy than three units. I, I feel like that we're in the space to where this is really going to be uh, a kind of realistic possibility. Uh, the other kind of big thing with both poppy and Jarvan is they are uh, highly conducive to open attacks. And so you typically want to be opening with poppy so your opponent can't interact with her. If they do interact with her, then you still got the stat bonus. And then Jarvan just being fantastic with open attacks as well, coming on board out of hand. Hand. And so uh, as we look at, you know, the kind of opposing deck to where we expect a lot of stun heavy kind of stuff and a lot of slow removal, uh, being able to have those really high powered open attacks coming from Poppy and Jarvan, uh, think that we should make me think we should get a bit of an advantage here. The thing that does worry me about this is we are uh, not being interactive, right? We're just basically uh, coming out here and, and you know, lining it up and measuring up and see who can do the, the most powerful thing the fastest. If opponent sticks in a Lowey, we have one removal spell. <laughs> you know, we, we have one copy of Concerted Strike. And so we don't have any challengers. We have one removal spell. We don't have ways to stop the opposing engine. We're basically just saying, hey, bro, you know, let, let's do powerful shit. Let's see who can do the most powerful thing the fastest and win the game with it. <laughs> and so hopefully our big unit boosting package will help us carry off in that sense. And so, you know, again, I, I don't have the highest of expectations here. I feel like our opponent's lineup uh, works extremely well into what we're going to be doing. But uh, I feel like we've at least assembled a strategy that does have uh, some game against what he's going to be doing. And so before the battles begin, we need help this week. We certainly need it. You know, uh, I, I don't feel like our lineup is strong enough. Our opponent is certainly better than us in terms of technical skill. And so this is where we can get him. This is the way that we can do it. We got Santa Brahm already, but 
I think it's time to turn the big boy premium. Get those muscles ready. Get the poros lined up. Get in that premium Brom. I think that's everything we need to potentially take this match down. And so that's it. We've got our lineup together. We've got the premium treatment assigned to it. We, the deck lists are going to be released. Let's pull up Shadox's list, see if we were right in terms of what he's bringing today. Okay, the deck lists are in. As expected, Elise Lissandra turns up. No way we're going to play against this, <laughs> this big removal pile. I expected it was going to come in, and I most certainly am not going to play it. And so that's fine. That's going to be a reasonable enough pass for us. I mean, actually, it's like as I, as I, as I stop to look at it, it's not playing War Mother's Call, and it's not playing Feel the Rush. It's just a just, just gigantic removal pile. Uh, it's... I, I'm having to stop and reassess this deck because I, I think that what I was kind of expecting to come out of this was going to be something that uh, just, uh, you know, has like a, a ton of removal and then like She Who Wanders and It That Stares and Buried in Ice and like just, just removal, removal, removal. But the, the thing that's typically problematic in terms of um, this deck in Eternal is the War Mother's Call. And so like your opponent spends a couple of turns ramping and then they eventually just drop a giant unit. Like you can deal with the singular giant unit, but the, the problems start to roll in when the unit after unit after unit after unit comes. And that's just not what this deck does. It has uh, very little in terms of removal spells as I was expecting. Like it's got big packages with the flash freezes and the harsh winds, but not so much actual physical removal. I'm going to have to actually stop and think about this one a little more, because as we move over, Victor Lux is the, the Lux deck that was coming in. I'm a little uh, hesitant to, to, to come out and face this one. Again, like things like Mage Seeker, Mage Seeker Persuader are super strong. The removal suite here is fairly manageable. Again, like it's only the three Mystic shots. We aren't seeing too much in terms of ways to uh, come in and kill a LeBlanc, but... This is the one that starts to worry me a little more. The, the one I don't think we'll be touching is this Alawi Shen. Uh, again, given that uh, I think our width is going to be okay here, I, I think that we can uh, really come in and battle with this one, just getting enough units on board. Now, the thing I will kind of call out with this lineup is I fully expected him to, uh, to, to come in and ban our Jax Braum. But like looking at these various lists, there are three copies of Heavy Metal within Alawi. Uh, there's no uh, weapon removal coming out of the, the Victor Lux deck minus the Scholarly Pioneer. Uh, and then last but not least in the Elise deck, there were the three copies of Quietus. And so I, I'm kind of curious if, uh, if opponent wasn't playing under the kind of idea that we are probably just going to ban Lux and he's going to leave Jax up and then try and 2-0 our Jax deck with these two options here. Uh, I'm curious if that's a thing. Like I... I feel kind of okay with our jacks. You know, the, the removal here isn't that great, but we do have the three sisters to answer in Alawi and then the Wild Claws Ferocity to kind of fight through things. We aren't like super tied into Bone Club, and so seeing things like Quietus isn't that scary, but uh, I can't remember from his earlier lists if he was packing this much weapon removal or... You know, when you're, when you're looking at Bilgewater, their removal is all shit anyway, so they get kind of stuck playing heavy metal as it is. And so uh, I'm kind of curious if we're going to be fighting through with our jacks. But again, as I, as I look at this um, this Elise Lissandra list, I, I'm just having a, a hard time uh, imagining this isn't just kind of okay. I mean, I, I guess there are, like, the, the quietest soul harvest kind of... Um, uh, Ash, Shadow Isle, Zombie Ash, as it may be called, kind of things with the Quietuses and the Soul Harvest and then the big collection of Frostbites. But, huh, I, I don't know. I, I just look at this list and I don't feel as worried about it as I thought I was going to be. I, I just like thought we're going to see the list and there's like eight units and then it's like Vile Feast and Soul Harvest and uh, uh, just like Eradicates and just all that pure nonsense. But there's no heal. There's no like really big removals. There is a slight worry that, you know, uh, the, the thing you can kind of do with this removal suite is potentially get the fearsome Ladros down, who now has 10 attack, and like frostbite something, and then attack for 10, and then atrocity for the other 10. That's kind of on the table, but man, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to leave this up and come in and just ban out the Victor Lux. It just strikes me as being the 
uh, the much more problematic deck in this space. And so we'll see. You know, if we get our Jax Braum 2 owed, that kind of sucks. But uh, like again, I, I feel like uh, we have a, a kind of strong shot here. A lot of the power in our Jax Braum doesn't come from uh, the the likes of uh, the equipment. It comes from things like Omen Hawks and Averosian Outriders putting stats on our units. And so it's not like we're, you know, four stacking forges onto Bone Club and then um, just getting it blown up by Quietus. Uh, one of the things that does worry me as we see this this quietest soul harvest combo is we do have Braum in the deck, right? Uh, the the zero six Braum, at least he does survive quietest now, but he definitely gets uh, he gets aced by soul harvest and such. But uh, I think I'm okay with this. I, I think we're going to stick to this plan. I'm going to va ban Victor Lux. I think our Jax deck is probably going to be left up and it might struggle a little bit. But uh, again, I think all of our decks are capable of uh, generating wins here, and so. Let's dive on into battle and see how it goes. All right, off we go. The Bone Clubs, the Elites, the Yetis. Let's dive on in, see what comes up. And all right, so Lux, you get the ban. See ya. Because again, that's kind of curious to me. I There's so much weapon removal coming in. I expected the, the Jax deck to be the one uh, being removed, but... Uh, I could definitely see Jack staying up with the amount of removals that, uh, that he had across the two decks, the Quietus and the Heavy Metal, with what's going to be staying up. Uh, and so uh, I'm very interested to see. Again, you know, may maybe if if he's envisioning us just banning the Shadow Isles deck, because that's what I've historically done against every <laughs> everyone in this event, and that's what I historically do in life. Uh, if he's done a bit of research into how we've handled these things, uh, he, he might expect the Lux to stay up and the Shadow Isles to be the auto ban. Uh, but... I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. I mean, I guess there are two copies of Hex Obliterator in his Jace Lux, and so it's not like it's without uh, without equipment removal. But I, I don't think Poppy ever gets banned, and I think Ash LeBlanc. You know, I I do think this kind of fell nice for us in terms of Ash LeBlanc being able to, um, uh, you know, not die to any of these removals particularly easily, but. Let's kick it off with Elites, see what happens here, see if we can't run out a nice curve. He leads with Elise. All right, so what do we got? Let's kick things off with Bird, make sure we have an early play. It's somewhat tempting to hang on to form up, uh, but the way I really want these games to kind of curve out, or I want to just be playing like the first six, the first 10 mana, uh, all on units. So we play one drop, two drop, three drop, and a poppy, or whatever combination it takes for all of those just to be units on board. And then a little bit later on is when you would come in and uh, have access to those spells. Like, I don't want to be uh, just sitting around waiting to see if we can find a way to... Um, uh, find a way to get on board like that. Now, interesting stuff here. Um, like, I, I'm leaning towards just dropping the Elite. It is quite strong at this point. Having it get popped by a Calling Strike kind of sucks. Otherwise, uh, we do have the Battlesmith here. The The problem, you know, with the units we have at hand is they all die to quiet us, except for the Defender, right? But uh, I think we can maybe come in with the Battlesmith. If he just drops a unit this turn, then fine. If he comes in with the Quietus to stop it, uh, that's okay as well. I, I think it's a reasonable stop here. And Elise... Not who we wanted to see, but not completely terrible for our game plan. Bird, bird's ready to party. That's part of the game plan, I guess. All right, Elise rolls through. Now, he's not playing anything like Vile Feast. We can pretty safely block the Spiderling here with our Battlesmith uh, and not worry about it getting killed. Now we're kind of in this spot. I want to lead off with the Defender to make sure it gets the bonuses. Then we can follow up with Bird. Make sure to get everybody on board. And check these. All the champions coming down. Okay, so we can chain out our elites here. We have uh, the, the squire coming in for two and then a follow-up squire for additional two. I think that's okay. Uh, this is our kind of like last chance to get these bigger units on board. And I, I suspect that he probably just like wants to play a ramp spell this turn. So if we find ourselves with just the uh, the three big elites on the board and he plays a ramp card, I feel like that's a pretty okay turn for us. It does open us up to the space to where 
uh, we can get hit by Buried and Ice on the follow-up turn, but, you know, building into this champion strength feels like it should be fairly strong. Stat monsters on board. Too bad we don't have that champion strength mana for next turn, right? <laughs> that's what that's what life's supposed to be all about. Getting those champion strengths up and running. Oh, got a kitty wanting to hang out. It's that time of the video. Come on, dude. I think this is okay. Why is he ever attacking with Elise here? I, I, he can't play a if that stares in this upcoming turn. He doesn't have any ways to deal damage. Is this just as a way to kind of fit in a quietus? Like, why does he do this? Is the... It's very confusing to me. All right, I'll take the bait. I don't, I don't get what's happening here, but I'll take, uh, I'll take the bait on that one. Now here, rolling into next turn, if we want to get this champion strength down, we can't add any more cards. I would like to get this Vanguard Sergeant online, but it doesn't look like it's going to be on the table. Crawling sensation makes sense. I'll give you that. So do we, do we even really feel the need to play champion strength next turn? Right, we can say vanguard sergeant and then just open we have reasonable attacks uh, i don't want to just clear out the board at this point but like say we attack he puts elise in front of vanguard squire the one ones go in front of the birds we're punching in for like 10. i, I don't think champion strengths in the cards next turn let's just go ahead and add in the vanguard sergeant it sucks to overwrite the units especially as he can be like you know, here's a removal spell now, but um, I, I think the, the the shenanigans are too obvious if we don't get uh, another card on board. It's just like, this is a, a very strong open attack as it is. Vengeance rolls through. You gotta like seeing that. So at this point, we don't have to worry. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, like the bigger spells, like it that stares and all of that. We could just play the four Demacia. I, I don't think it's going to be that great here, though. I. I I'm, I'm just kind of feel like we should be able to get into the next turn and just play uh, champion strength. And so let's just make this attack. He's going to block everything. We're going to lose a bird. We're going to lose a battlesmith. We're going to lose a vanguard squire. If he has a harsh winds, I'm not certain if he plays it to prevent damage or if he plays it to protect his units. But uh, I think it's okay at the end of the day. It's another good spot to just kind of have this damage spread out in the sense that um, like if we make a champion strength play on our attack token, uh, it gives him the chance to just like flash freeze stuff and take away those stats, but playing it on his token, uh, he doesn't quite get the opportunities to do that. So he's playing them for the, the damage prevention. So we only lose two units here. Kind of nice. It's uh, very curious to see if he spends any mana in this space. Like him just popping us with buried and ice here. You know, not ideal. But if he just drops a unit or whatever, we win the game. We don't have to worry about uh, his bigger units at this place, right? So this is scary. Like if he has the uh, uh, the landmark destruction guy, <laughs> then we're definitely going to be uh, definitely going to be struggling to recover. But if he doesn't specifically have the Ithid stairs, then 
uh, we should hopefully be in pretty good shape. Today's the day I find that hero. Let's find that hero, Poppy. Are our friends going to be safe? Nope. <laughs> nope, they aren't. Ugh. So it is worth noting there that he did blow up his own landmark. Uh, so that's off the table. We don't have to worry about that giant unit coming on board next turn. But this is kind of a crappy spot to be in now. So we're not quite dead to atrocity. We can add in the Ram Hound. <sighs> I'm, I'm curious if we just kind of like have to champion strength at this point. We don't have too many outs. I think we can look to see if we find a scrutinizing sergeant, but he's really uh, all we have going for us at this spot. J4. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little awkward with him, but he at least survives the, the slam into the Ithit stairs. And maybe we get to champion strength next turn. Vengeance into Poppy. Okay. Not looking too good, fam. Not looking too good. can't imagine he lets his cataclysm into his uh into his it that stairs it would be cool if he did uh but i i don't think that that's going to be on the table can do some cool stuff with poppy now now though uh, we can we can cataclysm poppy into some of these smaller units and keep her her abilities up and running he does unfortunately get to draw cards in this space but um does give us a chance to um, get some of these units off board. You know, if we draw a scrutinizing sergeant or something, have a bunch of friends out and about. What you got for us, Dak? You're not giving up that easy, huh? J4? Fuck. Fuck me, I guess, huh? <laughs> Why not? Why not just send him in? Nah. Too bad. Too bad. That was, that was like right where champion strength gets the chance to win the game. Boo. All right, GG. So yeah, I I still think I'm okay with that. Like, again, it's it's a real struggle uh, if you land in that space to where. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to make champion strength plays, but the entirety of your team gets shrunk. And so if he gets a... Uh, we attack with, like, two four fours, and he harsh wins them, and then we try to champion strength off that, we've lost a ton of stats. So it's not really what you want to be seeing in that sense. And so I, I like the chance to kind of spread everything out. And uh, it does play into Barry to Nice, but, you know... It's uh, it's kind of one of those spots to where if he doesn't have the specific buried in ice, then we're in an extremely favorable spot. But let's see what the elites can do here. Very powerful opener with the double Ram Hound and Scythria giving us eight power on turn two. And then the cheapened up Vanguard Squire for the turns after that. Ram Hound in. Ram Hound number two in. Scythria, come to the party. Aw, that kind of sucks. I don't want to see these two threes come on the board. Alright, we'll still send our big boys. He takes it. I'm curious if what that amounts to. If he's going to say like tentacle slam one ram hound and then attack the other one down. I'm not entirely certain the angle that that brings. Okay. 
So we can play out our whole hand next turn, so there's no reason to, to add anything here. We're going to add the Battlesmith and the Squire. We're going to add all the friends. If I didn't forge it, you won't want it. This is why people enjoy Elites being a deck. <laughs> this is what people like. Look at this. Are we going to... Do we overwrite? Like this is this is just like such a not good attack, right? We have the two fours that can come in. Hmm. This, this was a very powerful Shen for the turn. Like it, it's like if we attack with everybody, he just gets the three value blocks across the board. I don't think we can do that. I think the two Sithrias are as good as it's going to get. He gets the one fresh block with Shen, the other one gets a gets a takedown on the unit. And then we can try and fight later once the barriers are down. It's just uh, like if it was a Lowy, we, we could have probably sent well, would have probably still been in the same spot. But we don't lose any units this way. We needed to find just like a champion or a rally, and we should be okay. J4 comes up. So from the, like the combat tricks in his deck, I don't think we want to really get involved with the tentacle. Like it's syncopates one to not really worry about. I guess otherwise it's just twin disciplines. Otherwise it's it's barrier cards. And so like getting involved with this tentacle probably is safe. Like I I think I'm kind of okay with trading a twin disciplines for the Scythria. Let's just try and shrink up the Shen so his blocks aren't as good here in the future. Like, we'll see if J4 slams in or if he just adds a unit behind, but... Uh, it's not entirely clear. He's got a bro. Alright, well, J4 is definitely big enough to take down this tentacle. And we're, we're going to be swinging with everybody here. The Vanguard Sergeant does have to give us a little pause. We, we need these... Uh, we, we definitely need these... Um, uh, four Demacias with a board like this. But this attack is just too good to give up. Like, if he has a barrier, it kind of sucks. And he can technically maybe set up blocks to where our units don't die and then j4 does because there's nowhere for him on our bench but i gotta assume that he's gonna be out here blocking stuff Seems okay though. Yeah, it's got to be bound to be a trick somewhere, but I think this one is fine with the tentacle uh, getting the boost. It doesn't get to deal any damage, and so it's not like uh, it's activating a giant combo or something. Some of our board clears out, so our Jarvan gets to live. I think that's okay. And he set it up so we don't get cataclysms. A touch of a bummer, but not that bad. Now, interesting space here with the, the scrutinizing sergeant turning up. I mean, with with opponent at two, I, I don't think we really have to worry about uh, casting the, the four Demacia. Now, with the tentacle coming in, I'm just going to ignore it. I, I don't want to run into a spot to where it picks up... Um, it, it picks up some kind of lifesteal and starts to cause us a lot of problems in that sense, and so we'll just leave it at home. And a form up. All right. Well, here's the squad, little to big. In case he has the barrier lifesteal card, we want to force his blocks down to the left. 
looks like it was enough to get it. I was getting worried with that game. I was going to say, uh, after last week with Poppy dropping both matches, and then if she dropped both matches this week as well, that was going to be a bit of a bummer for her. But <laughs> she's able to fight through and survive the day. Now we can bring Jax Braum into this. All right, so what are the keeps looking like here? I definitely want to hang on to Omen Hawk. There is some argument to just go ahead and get rid of the Ruthless Raider. It doesn't combat particularly well here. Um, you know, like, as far as the units go, it, it can, I guess, tussle with a 2-3. And just it just dies. I mean, I'm not amped about it, but we should probably at least try and play a little bit on curve. I think that we're definitely going to be the, uh, be the aggro in this match. All right, fam, so what do you think the chances are he has heavy metal? <laughs> do we want to just directly play Jax and run him into the heavy metal? I'm a, I'm a little bit too worried about that at the moment, and so we won't take it. He doesn't have any early plays, I guess. This tentacle thing came out of the left side of his hand. That's something he would want to be, you know, adding early anyways. This man is getting tapped out. Should be able to add in Jax now. The other thing we could look to do is uh, just take the bank this turn and then play a wild claw ferocity next turn what do we think about that i, I don't think i really want to go for it i i'm leaning more towards here seeing if we can't just get him to like take some trades you know just spend some of his mana not build up the tentacles not really get the tentacles going and then try and build this up into a spot to where we just like bone club ferocity back to back and get the takedown that could be a thing, and, you know, if Jax does end up dying here, delivering the Light of Akathia to a Ruthless Raider, then hitting it with a Hearthblood Mender isn't the uh, the worst thing in the world. I'll go ahead and take this. If this is a Twin Disciplines out of his hand, I'm okay with that as well. Now, the downside with this turn is we don't have a, a lot of mana spend here. It's going to have to be Bone Club. I like to think if he had the heavy metal, he would have heavy metal Jax. He's such a prime target for it, but, you know, stranger stranger things have certainly happened. It just, the heavy metal does not exist here, right? So we can't attack with Jax, he just dies to Alawi, but we've, we've got this massive all-in strike ready for the next turn, though, huh? We can, uh, we can Hearthblood Mender the, the Bone Club and then open with the Wild Claws Ferocity. Some serious, serious power we can send through here. Oh, is this the Heavy Metal? Okay, Tentacle Smash. Alright, squeeze them cheeks, fellas. We're ready to we're ready to aggro. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know how you all like to aggro. I know how I like to do it. And it's gonna be with this massive omen hawk. So let's see. Let's see. Like what can he come in and ruin our day with in terms of this plan next turn? I, I, I don't want to get the Omen Hawk involved in this combat. I would like to get this tentacle off the board. I feel like if we get this massive tentacle off the board, we'll be okay. Uh, and then this should be the spot to where we just go for the giant overwhelm next turn, right? We'll have the uh, the unit won't be big enough to kill Alawi, but uh, that's that's like just such a tough recovery point. I think that we'll be okay. So we are going to be short of the lethal now. We were definitely going to be short, but I thought we might be able to get this Alawi off of the board. So if he has another barrier, how bad is this? Like, I, I just don't like going for the, um, the the big play this turn anymore. Like if we if we get the seven onto the Wild Claw, it's only 13 power. You can just ignore it. Like his blocks all feel good. 
I, I do want to get the Omen Hawk involved in combat this turn, but I think it's through the Hearthblood Mender. Like, we just continue to grow the unit, get a little bit of board presence so that we just don't immediately die to this stuff. So this Alawi is the real deal. We don't want to be putting our our bird in front of her as she's attacking. And this also does potentially give us a shot to fish fight her down. You know, if he's not open attacking next turn, we could maybe get a fish fight into Alawi. Okay. Well, I, I think if we end up trading for the tentacle here, it's okay. He doesn't have to go for it. Uh, but... Like, this, this is such a major setback for a Lowie in terms of her uh, being able to get an OTK on this next turn. And then we still have our plays, right? We can still drop Bone Club on a different unit. It's got fucking plus nine, plus nine on it, right? <laughs> it's a, it's a, a real deal unit that's capable of rolling through. So that right there is a 15-piece nugget. Gotta do some blocking in front of this. The thing that worries me a little bit about this attack would be something like Syncopate. It, it can be a touch problematic. Being able to move around his units so something that he has isn't blocked. Eye of Nagakaboros coming in. Most certainly blocking this stuff. These aren't both lethal, right? So he's coming in for 17. Say we block one. If he wants to play a swap, then... Um, uh, we don't die. We would just take, we'd actually take less damage if he's going to play Syncopate here. Look at, <laughs> look at the size of this apprentice. Rico, Rico Rex would uh, would love to see the stuff that we're out here doing. This is the this is the way champions do it. Am I right? Now here we have the mana for the ferocity and uh, the fish fight. I I'm curious if we aren't able to get this Alawi off of the board. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen here if we wild claw ferocity and then play fish fight? Like, Twin Disciplines or a Barrier? Do we even need to do it first? Let's just attack first and then try and do the cleanup afterwards. Oh, that's so bad. It's not even enough to kill the kill through the Buru lookout. Definitely like seeing a Lowie be the one to, to take the brunt of it here. I guess it's a, a barrier makes sense. But again, this is another spot to where we can put pressure onto this tentacle. And then it... Well, uh, we, we might just be dead here. I think we are just dead here. We're gonna have to like pick up a three sisters or something to uh, to fight through this. Who's on top of the bounty board today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can take down the big unit and the tentacle, but even with uh, even with the three sisters, we're gonna just be dead. Damn. Oh, we didn't have any ex extra units to put on the board or anything this turn. We didn't have an Overwhelm for Battle Fury. <sighs> That's a bummer. Um, I don't think... Yeah, it's just like our our spell was too big. There was no way even for our spell to... Uh, I see no obstacles ahead. 
Uh, damn. I was gonna say, there's no way for our... Like, even if we played the Overwhelm on the previous turn and then... Bone, or, like, Battle Fury on this turn, it wasn't gonna be enough to do it. Whew, that's brutal, man. We were so, so close and, like... Usually, like, playing against a Lowie, when you're in that space of um, of taking the big tentacle down, they typically aren't able to recover. I, I, I can't think if there was a space in that to where we would have been able to um, stop a Lowie from flipping, right? That's where a Lowie starts to be really in the problem zone in terms of being able to get a kill on her, right? If she is a 15 power 6... You can still throw a Wild Claw Ferocity in front of her and get the takedown, but when she flips and starts boosting her toughness and she gets to be, you know, like an 18-18 or whatever, you, you can just never get the takedown there. And so uh, I'm curious if there wasn't a place to where we could have uh, potentially gotten the takedown on her uh, or kept her from flipping. And so on the future attacks, we had a, a potential out to, uh, to get a block in there. Otherwise, I, I think that went okay. It, it, we did run into the problem at the end of that game three to where um, the, this deck can draw the things in the wrong order to where we had double wild claw ferocity and battle fury but we didn't have any units and we couldn't get anything else on board uh, and so that's a, a bit of a pain point as well but we had a, a couple of different angles in there i like the path that we took I, I feel like going all in a little bit earlier was just probably not the way to do it um, you know we were like within the cusp of lethal so many times and with that uh, lifesteal thing gaining like eight points of health it was more than enough to just like jerk them right back up into the safe zone and we could never you know put together like a 16 damage otk it's just way too much damage when he was at like eight health uh, it, it was certainly on the table across the board but in the late point it wasn't there but nonetheless very good game uh, i'm i'm still like thinking on that game one with the champion strength and getting hit with the buried in ice i i still think that that was pretty okay like, uh, Buried in Ice was really the only card to worry about there. And so there's, you know, kind of two schools of thoughts in that spot. Number one being they've only got two copies of it and it's hard to have. And so, uh, you know, if you're going to play around their two of card on like turn six or turn seven of the game, uh, as, as opposed to the other avenue of thought with being you know the only card that can beat us in this space is buried in ice so let's play around it a lot but the extent of the playing around that we would have had would have been uh basically just the one unit and you know the one unit could have been enough with like the poppy and some other unit boosting going along with it uh, and so not getting our extra unit buried uh could have been a thing but that's tough nonetheless very good games. I was still happy with our strategy. I think that Lissandra deck was definitely the, the one to go after as opposed to the Lux deck. I think that Lux deck was going to be nasty, and we fell just a little bit short at the end of the day. But nonetheless, good set of games. Congratulations to Shadox. Very well played. I'm pretty sure he's at the top of the rankings now, and then that is going to do it for us. So hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way. You had a good time watching. So this is Bustin' Me. Thank you for being here.